Somebody sent me what they said was the third secret of Fatima. Yeah. I actually read it on the air, and then I somehow lost it. If anybody out there has it, please resend it to me. Now, it's my understanding that you have taken a vow of silence or secrecy. Uh, you have read the third secret. It was shared with you. Is that correct? It was given to me to read, yes. yes. One mm -hmm. morning early in February 1960, and, of course, before I got it, I had to take up this simple oath you always take, of maintaining the secret. So the details of it I cannot communicate. If, I mean, the, the actual verbiage and expressions. Yes. If, um, if this third secret of Fatima were made public, yes. could it be the shock that the public, that the church needs? It could be. And that is one reason why it's not published and why it's sunk into a limbo, out of which it's not going to come easily. It would be a shock. There's no doubt about that. Uh, it, it would affect people in different ways, though, Art. Um, some people would, on being told that this was authentically the third secret of Fatima, mm -hmm. they would get extremely angry. Oh, I understand. Believe me. Very I, angry. Oh, believe me, I understand, Father. Stand by, and we'll get back to you after the bottom of the hour break. If... Anybody has it out there, and I know you do, um, I would appreciate your emailing it to me um, post haste right away. Uh, because what I would like to do is read it on the air and see if Father Martin uh, would have comment on it. It might be a way of getting comment on it or verifying it if I actually had it in my hand. So if you have it out there, uh, please send it to me. In the meantime, when we come back, I will ask Father Martin as much as we're able to about the third secret. It certainly would be a shock. I'm Art Bell. This is Coast to Coast AM. All right, here we go. Uh, and I really want to thank the person that transcribed this for me. The following is a transcription of what is possibly the third secret in Fatima, as read by Art Bell over the air on Coast to Coast AM on 5-1498 at 34 minutes and 48 seconds into the program. And I began it uh, with this preamble, all right, I in no way warrant the following as being authentic. I have no way of knowing. All I can tell you is it feels real. It is alleged to be the third secret of Fatima. You decide for yourself. Here we go. A great plague will befall mankind. Nowhere in the world will there be order. Satan will rule the highest places, determining the way of things. He will succeed in seducing the spirits of the great scientists who invent arms with which it will be possible to destroy a large part of humanity in a few minutes. Satan will have his power. The powerful who command the people and who will incite them to produce enormous quantities of arms. God will punish man more thoroughly than with the flood. There will come the time of all times, and the end of all ends. The great and powerful will perish together with the small and weak. Even for the church, it will be the time of its greatest trial. Cardinals will oppose cardinals. Bishops will oppose bishops. Satan will walk among them, and in Rome there will be changes. The church will be darkened, and the world will be shaking with terror. One great war will erupt in the second half of the 20th century. Fire and smoke will fall from the sky. The waters of the oceans will change into steam, and the steam will rise and overflow everything. The waters of the ocean will become mist. Millions and millions of people will die from hour to hour. Whoever remains alive will envy the dead. Everywhere one turns, one's glance, there will be, um, uh, there is going to be anguish and misery, ruins in every country. The time draws nearer. The abyss widens without hope. The good to perish with the bad the great with the small, the princes of the church with the faithful, the rulers with their people. 
There will be death everywhere because of the errors committed by non-believers and crazy followers of Satan, which will then, and only then, take control over the world. At the last, those who survive will at every chance newly proclaim God and His glory, and they will serve Him as when the world was not so perverted. That's it. Father Martin? Yes, Art. Any comments on that? I have listened to that. Um, and I suppose the, the, the measured response I should give to it is this, um, in two parts, really, two statements. It is not the text which was given to me to read okay. in 1960. There are elements in it which belong in the text. So, uh, in other words, uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying to step as carefully as I can. In other words, uh, you're suggesting this is not precisely what you have, but there are elements of what you just heard. Yes, there are elements which uh, do belong in the third secret. Um, that's, that's about the most measured response I could give to it. I am, okay, that's fine, and I, I will not ask you to say more, uh, yes. but it, bearing in mind what I just read, yes. would you consider the third secret to be as traumatic as is suggested in what I read, or more so? More so. More so? More, more so, yeah. Much, oh. more, much more so. The... the Without again, <laughs> you know, I'm stepping very carefully. Yes, sir. Uh, the uh, the central element in the third secret uh, is awful, and it's not in that. It's not version. in that. It's not in the text. No, it's not. Now, I guess I would ask this. I understand that you have taken an oath. That's right. But have you considered? that the shock that is required mm -hmm. to turn things around may be this very serious, and, and that it may be that um, it should be revealed. To your last sentence, my full assent, it should be revealed. But here's my difficulty, Art. I'm one small little man. Mm -hmm. I have no public authority to do that. I do not know if that would be the will of God. And since it would have such dire effects on much more than Christians, on many others, um, I, I can't make that decision. I, I, I can't make that decision. I have no, I have no assurance that that's God's will. And since this is a question of His supreme will as regards the world, the human race, its existence and its continuance and its future, I, I have no authority. Father, in what manner were you shown the third secret? Because the cardinal who showed it to me had been present at a meeting held by Pope John XXIII uh, in that year, 1960, to outline to a certain number of cardinals and prelates what he thought should be done with the secret. Uh, John XXIII, Pope John XXIII, then Pope in 1960, mm -hmm. uh, did not think that he should publish the secret, it would ruin his, at that time, ongoing negotiations with Nikita Khrushchev, the boss of all the Russias. Mm -hmm. And he also had a different outlook on life, which, in two years later, opening the Vatican Council, he echoed very succinctly and almost contemptuously in the middle of his speech on October 11, 1962, 
in St. Peter's to the assembled bishops who had come for the Vatican Council and the visitors, the place was crowded, a huge basilica, he derided contemptuously the people he called prophets of doom. Mm -hmm. And there was no doubt in any of our minds he was talking about the three prophets of Fatima. Mm -hmm. He was against that. There are those within the church mm -hmm. who minimize mm -hmm. what is uh, contained in the third secret. Absolutely. And then there are others who don't minimize it at all. They exaggerate. They exaggerate. Yes, they do. Uh, so without minimizing or without exaggerating, you're mm -hmm. telling me that what's in the third secret is more horrible than what I just read. Which oh, yes, Art, it is. Because what you have just read, uh, essentially, it is the onslaught of natural powers. Sure, Satan is walking, etc., like that, amongst men, and blah, 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 patati, patata. But essentially, it is as if nature revolted against the human race. That's essentially what, uh, through all these terrible catastrophes and chastisements. And that's not the essence of the third secret. And not the frightening one. Oof. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, it, it does beggar the imagination. Well, again, in a, in a sense, uh, it would be such a shock that I understand that you have grave reservations about it, but if it would, if it would in effect, um, right the church. Yeah, yeah. I, if it would, but you know, Art, I have no guarantee. I have no authority that would say, yes, this, the net result will be plus rather than minus. I have no authority. I have no revelation. No angel has tapped me on the shoulder. I've had no private divine dream like St. Joseph or uh, Joseph in the Old Testament had. I have no authority, and I cannot arrogate to myself uh, that authority because I may be putting my foot in my mouth, <laughs> put it in a mild fashion. Hmm. I may be uh, going ahead of the Lord, and we're supposed to walk in the words of one f a Roman saint, five yards behind the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. I, 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 and besides that, uh, Art, there's the question of shock, of scandal, of, of frightening people and polarizing my human society to which I belong and to which I'm happy to belong because God made me to belong to it as a member of the human race. And I cannot do that. Not, not just like that. I just can't. I wish I could, because in human calculation, yes, this will shock. This will uh, jerk people out. This will fill the confessionals on a Saturday evening. This will mm -hmm. fill up the cathedrals and the basilicas and the churches with worshippers kneeling down, striking their breath. Maybe, maybe, because at the back of it all, us, there's this regnant, reigning, as it were, Catholic truth that nothing like that can happen unless God gives the grace, and I have no authority to presume that he will give me the grace, or give the grace on the occasion of my doing a thing like that. With what, uh, how much weight, Father, do you give to the uh, entire Fatima revelations? I consider it to be the key event in the declining fortune of the Roman Catholic organization and the defining event for the near future of the church in the second mille in the in the next millennium in the third millennium it's the defining event all right father martin again referring to what i read which you said yes. had partial um, Echoes. relevance yes relevance yes uh, would you imagine that the person who wrote this uh, had been privy in some way to the original yes. text? Yes. Uh, yes, 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 certainly. Oh, at, least by, at least by word of mouth, if not by, I understand. by reading. Yeah. All right, I'll say for my own edification uh, that if anybody else has what they consider to be a valid copy of the third secret of the Fatima, why, by all means, send it to me. And I am 
curious about just one thing, Father. Yes. Um, if I actually got a copy of the precise text, yes. and I were to read it and ask you if that was, in fact, correct. I would have to say yes, if it were. But do not fear. All right. I'm bouncing back for a second to the yes. third secret. Here's a fax from Bob in Eclaire, Wisconsin. It's kind of rough. It says, Art, why would God give this prophecy, referring, of course, to the third secret, to a select few, and instruct them not to give it to his people? It sounds to me that it is man who has decided to keep it a secret from the people and not God. Can there be any greater sin than this? Well, whoever this man is, he's on target. The secret was meant, to, was meant for the people, not for the Pope. Not for the bishops, not for the Holy Office. It was meant to be published in 1960 by explicit order, by the mandate of heaven. Let me remind you that in 1963 there was a second appearance, this time in Spain, in Garabandal. And the opening words of that revelation were, because... My sons have not listened to my orders, my mandate. Mm -hmm. Here's what's going to happen. And the message was very dire. It's repetition of the third secret in brief form. So, uh, it wasn't the will of God. The will of God has been frustrated. But you see, uh, let me remind you, and, and, uh, and that, uh, the particular man, that the will of God is frustrated continuously. And that doesn't mean it wasn't his will, and his will will not work out finally. So, uh, it's a pity. And eventually, eventually the secret will be revealed, and will work its way out. But this time, painfully. Sir, we've got to hold it there, I'm afraid. Okay. I Thank very you, much appreciate your call. Father Martin, uh, hold on just a moment, sure. and we will be right back. This is Coast to Coast AM. Well, all right, uh, what I'm going to do is read just the preamble to this and see if uh, the good father finds uh, identification with this. Uh, it says, Do not worry, dear child. It is I, the mother of God, speaking to you and asking you to proclaim in my name the following message to the whole world. In doing so, you will meet strong opposition. Be firm in your faith, however and you will triumph over all opposition. Listen and remember well what, am I, what I am about to tell you. Men must become converted. They must implore pardon for the sins that they have committed and for those they will commit again in the future. You have requested a sign by which all men would understand my utterances given to humanity through you. This miracle you have seen at this very moment it was the great miracle of the sun. All have seen it, believers and unbelievers, peasants, townsmen, scholars, and journalists, laymen and priests, and now proclaim in my name. And what follows is the secret. Does that, Father, sound familiar? There is no preamble. Well, I'm not sure preamble was the right... Yeah, oh, there is no introductory... Um a statement in the actual secret, the text, actual text of the secret itself. So you don't recognize what I just read? Not as a part of that one sheet of paper. No, but it may well be that what follows... Well, then let me give you just a little bit of what follows. A great punishment will come over the entire human race. Not yet today, nor tomorrow, but in the second half of the 20th century. Hmm. What I have already made known at La Salette, La Salette yeah. by the children Melanie and Maximin, I believe it Maximin is. Giroux. I repeat to you, humanity has not changed as God requested it to. It has sinned and trampled underfoot the gift it had received. There is no order anywhere. Satan rules, even in the highest positions, and determines the direction of things. He will succeed in worming his way even unto the highest summits of the church. He will succeed in seducing the minds of great scholars who will invent armaments with which half of humanity can be 
destroyed in seconds. He will have the mighty among the peoples under his sway and will induce them to turn out mass production of arms. If humanity does not amend itself, I will be forced to let go the arm of my son. If the mighty of the earth and of the church do not oppose this, I myself will do it, and I will ask God, my Father, to allow to come over men the punishment of his justice. It will then be that God will punish men more harshly than he did with the flood, and the mighty and the powerful shall perish along with the humble and weak. And it goes on from there. Yeah. The, uh, no, it's not the text. Uh, it, it, it's not specific enough. The text is very dry and specific, and um, but all, all all that is there is very accurate as regards the general Fatima interpretation of modern history, but it's not the text of the third secret uh, that I know. All right, here we go. Um, just a couple of things I want to quickly read. One from a friend in Australia, Father. Yes. Uh, who says, I had a Jesuit priest tell me more of the third secret of Fatima years ago in Perth. Uh, he said, among other things, the last pope would be under control of Satan. Pope John fainted, thinking it might be him. We were interrupted before I could hear the rest. Um, any comment on that? Yes. Uh, it sounds as if they were reading or um, being told the, the text of the third secret. Oh, my. It sounds like it. All right, and then just this one as well. This is from uh, Dan in um, Davenport, Iowa. It says, I was told by an old Catholic priest while I was stationed in Asia in the late 70s that in the last days, nature will attack everything we have and know and that all food will be gone. Starving will be so widespread that families will eat other members of their families. My God, just to stay alive. This madness will be so widespread there will be no place that will be safe and no place to hide until all the peoples uh, who do not believe in God are dead. Then life can start anew. No, that's not... That's not Part of it. It's not part of it. But that first one... Yes, it is. And there's a certain element in the second one which is near the truth. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry to be pushing on this. I'm no, just no, 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 no. Don't be sorry back. at all. It's, uh, I wish to God you hadn't got to push. 